start with importing the textures here. So these come from Kenny's particle pack. And then we're just going to add in, start with a spatial node here, and add in a sprite 3D and a animation player. This will be for the rain splash effect, which we'll call it rain splash. And then sprite 3D here, I'm just going to drag on this texture here and come down to geometry instance, new spatial material, and flags, unshaded, set transparent and parameters, we're going to set the billboard mode to particle billboard so that way we can affect the size of it and then add for blend mode so it just adds its color to whatever's behind it and let's come down to albedo, I'm going to make it partially transparent here so it's not overpoweringly bright and then next come over to the animation player here and I'm going to add a new animation called splash and so let's make the length 0.2, zoom in a bunch. And for the first part, we're going to come down to visibility and check that. So we create, we show this for the first step of the animation and then we hide it for the last step. And then again at the beginning, come down to transform here, make it, let's say, 0.1 for the scale and then check that. And then again for the end, and then for the middle part, we'll make it like 0.4, let's say, and put a key there. So if I hit this, it plays it, simple animated splash there. And we'll just save this scene. Next, we'll come in and another spatial node here, and we'll call this world. As a child, we'll add particles, 3D particles, name this the rain. Also add in a mesh instance and a camera. So for the rain here, we're going to go to draw passes, add in a plane mesh and not a quad mesh because that's not oriented right. Geometry entrance instance, add a spatial material, flags, unshaded, parameters, add mode and coal mode disabled. Then billboard mode, you want Y billboard. Albedo, add in the trace texture here, and then come back to rain here. Now, unfortunately, since it's, I'm going to save the scene real quick, since it's a wide billboard, you can't affect the scale, so you have to change the texture size to actually change the scale. Unless someone knows a better way, then please comment that. Uh, add a particles material, put a process material here. Gravity, I'm going to set that to zero, and then I want to rotate this on the X. By 90 degrees. You can see they show up correctly there. And now for spread, set that to zero. For the emission shape, I'm going to set that to a box and set it to 30 on the X and Y. Since we rotated it, that'll make it horizontal there. You can see them all appearing. And for initial velocity, I'm going to set that to like 70. And then for the amount, we'll put like 250 here. And there you go, that's a pretty good rain effect already. Now notice how if I zoom in, it stops rendering it. That's because the camera has to see this yellow box to actually render it. So to change that, you can just drag this down, drag these points out here to change the size of the box. Now it'll render it the full area. You can make it cover the whole thing if you want to see all of it. So next we need to set up the ground here, I'll call this mesh instance ground, give it a plane mesh, and I will R, let's scale it out a bunch like that, drag it down, and let's add some collision to it, create static, convex static body, and let's go to material, spatial material, flags, unshaded, albedo, black, And let's move the camera down. Preview that. All right, looks pretty good. Now we need to set up the actual rain system. So most games don't actually check the collision of raindrops to see when they hit the ground and put a splash there. Instead, what they do is they just kind of randomly generate splashes all over, and it looks good enough.
So what I'm gonna do is just add a script to this. And we're gonna start with defining the area. So it's gonna go uh, 100 by 100 is gonna be the area, 100 units. This, it just means 50 to negative 50, and then splashes per second, 300. Uh, pool size, so we're gonna just create all the splash objects at once, and then just change their position and animate them instead of uh, instancing every time we need one. And then here's the object itself that we're gonna use. There's uh, the path is the current directory, that's what dot slash means, and then splashes is, is the pool that we're using. So next we'll just create uh, this will reference the time since the last splash. Splash rate is just one over splashes per second, and then the current index of whatever splash we're using. Then in the ready function, we're going to loop through and create every single one, add it as a child to this, and then append it to the splashes pool, and then hide it. Then next, we're just gonna run through the process get the time, so add the time since the last frame to the time since splash, and then while that's greater than splash rate, we're gonna call make splash, which will be a splash function I'll make, um, increment the index, and then if it's greater than the size of the pool, set it back to zero using modulus, and then subtract the time since splash by splash rate. Notice that I used while here and not if, because if I used if, then we could only have a maximum of one splash per frame, and so if you had a 60 FPS game, then you'd only have 60 splashes per second max. And then next, I'm going to create the make splash function. So we're just gonna create a random horizontal position by taking a random range from negative to positive splash area for X and Z. And the start position here for the splash on the horizontal will be whatever our global position is, plus this randomized position. Then we're just gonna take the 3D space state here and then intersect, send a raycast through it, starting at this position, going down by 400 units. And then the result, if the result, if it hits something, it'll return a result that a dictionary that has more than zero uh, key value pairs in it. So we're just gonna take uh, whatever our current slash is set its global position to wherever we hit with the raycast and then move it up a tiny bit, half a unit here, and then just call the play the splash animation on that. So if I just hit play here, you can see it's working. Pretty simple, works pretty well.